The Lord bless all of you in this uh, beautiful morning that the Lord has given us. Que Dios le bendiga a todos en este día precioso que nos da. Se agradecemos la oportunidad que nos da de poder estar aquí en esta mañana. Bueno, thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here with you this morning. Alabando al Señor y eh, congregándonos, santificando este día. Worshiping the Lord and uh, sanctifying this day for His honor and glory. Bueno, creo que el hermano ya dijo mi nombre. Mi nombre es Marco. My name is Marco. Estoy pastoreando la iglesia Bautista Gracia Soberana en Pesquería, México. I'm currently a pastor of the Sovereign Grace Baptist Church in uh, Pesquería, Mexico. Somos una congregación pequeña eh, que tenemos 13 años. Está We are a small uh, church and uh, the church has been there for uh, 13 years now. Oh, wow. Tratamos de predicar el Evangelio del Señor este, en nuestra localidad. We try to preach the gospel to our community. Salimos, tocamos puertas, eh, casa por casa. We usually go out and door to door and we do evangelism. Vamos a los lugares concurridos como el centro comercial y damos algún folleto. We also go to the uh, public places, especially to you know the place where they have convenience stores. Mm -hmm. convenience stores and that's where we pass some gospel tracts on to people. Cuando hay una oportunidad de seguir teniendo pláticas con esas personas que conocemos en la calle y los visitamos en, en sus casas uh, frecuentemente. When uh, uh, there is an opportunity and people is willing to receive us in their homes, we go there to do some Bible studies. Amen. También hemos estado visitando algunas familias de los miembros de la iglesia que no son cristianos. We also uh, visit uh, and reach out to the family of the uh, uh, church members, those that are not coming or those that are not believers. Así que tratamos de que la palabra del Señor de, de esta manera esté siendo escuchada en, nuestro, en nuestra localidad. So we try, we strive uh, to the point that we can uh, preach the word and that the word is uh, uh, extended there in the gospel preach in our community. La, la localidad donde estamos nosotros es una localidad donde las personas uh, uh, han endurecido mucho su corazón. The location where we are, the community, is a place where uh, the, the people there, the, the, they, they have a very hard, hardness of heart, if you will. Uh, abundan los robos. There is a lot of uh, breaking to the houses. Las drogas. A lot of drugs. Uh, 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 las personas están habituadas al alcohol. Uh, people, they are, you know, used to, accustomed to live and, and drink a lot of alcohol. Mm. Cuando hablamos de la de las situaciones matrimoniales hay muchos problemas. When we talk about marriages, uh, couples, there, there's a lot of problems also. Otra vez escuché que en la zona de Nuevo León hay más divorcios que casamientos. Uh, the other day I heard that at this point the um, number of uh, divorces is almost higher than, you know, that the marriages, that, that wow. when people is getting married. <laughs> Todo esto eh, nos puede dar una idea de la condición hacia el Señor que tienen estas personas. All this can give us an idea of uh, what the uh, situation is of these people, their relationship with God. Así que pedimos mucho de sus oraciones por este lugar y que el Señor siga abriendo puertas en este sitio. We really want to ask you to remember us in your prayers uh, today that we may be able to reach out to more people Amen. there. Um, otra cosa que también nos hemos estado ocupando en nuestra iglesia o con las familias de nuestra iglesia. Another thing that we have been doing as a church and with the families of the church. Eh, algunas familias han optado o decidido este, educar a sus hijos en casa. We have encouraged and, and some of the families have uh, um, actually decided to educate uh, their children at home. Quizás para ustedes esto es algo muy ordinario, puede sonar algo muy común. Maybe for you this is something that is, you know, sort of uh, common in, in your country, in, in your culture. 
En México esto ni siquiera es bien visto. In Mexico, this is not even well accepted. De inmediato quieren confrontar a los padres y con la pregunta de tú eres maestro, tú enseñas. Immediately, uh, the families that do that in Mexico, they are confronted by different people, including, you know, family relatives. And one of the questions that they ask, uh, uh, why you're not sending them to school? Are you a teacher? Y, y, el, y el propósito que hemos estado haciendo esto uh, no es porque entendamos mucho. And the purpose we're doing this is because, not, not because we understand a lot and, and we are, you know, uh, teachers. Sino por el, el sistema corrompido que existe en, la, uh, en las escuelas públicas. But, but that's because of the concern and all the corruption that is out there yeah. in the public the school system in these days. Así que hemos estado animando a algunas familias de nuestra iglesia que han iniciado en esto a, a proseguir. So we have been encouraging uh, the families of our church that uh, decided to educate their children to, we try to encourage them to continue on with that. Amen. Eh, eh, nos reunimos en nuestra iglesia, este, nos animamos los unos a los otros, oramos y tratamos de tener algunas clases hacia nuestros hijos. We get together at church, we pray as families and uh, we try to encourage each other and have even classes uh, together at times. To Amen. Así que el Señor también que Dios nos ayude y nos dé mucha sabiduría a, a esto. So we really need uh, uh, a lot of uh, wisdom uh, from the Lord on this, so pray for us. Um, mi familia está conformada por mi esposa Nady y tengo cuatro hijos. My family is my wife Nady and I have four children. Eh, ellos están en, en casa, bueno, están en la iglesia ahora mismo. Right now they are at church at this very hour. Uh, y se, por, uh, se quedaron algo tristes cuando me vine. They were a little sad when I left. Uh, mi esposa quiso que yo diera los saludos a todos aquellos que conociera. My wife asked, my wife asked me to greet uh, all of you and the churches that I was going to be. Algunos otros hermanos de la, de la iglesia también eh, tienen un buen sentir para con ustedes. Some other uh, families and brethren there in the church, they also send their greetings to you. Así Amen. que yo estaré regresando en el mes de noviembre a México y en estas semanas que vienen tendré otra oportunidad de predicar. So my schedule is that I'm going to be uh, flying back to Mexico the first week of uh, November. Hmm. Así que, que Dios nos ayude y estaremos, eh, estaremos orando por ustedes como iglesia. So we will be uh, praying for you as a church and pray for us as well. Amen. Um, este, otra de las cosas que hacemos como iglesia es el apoyo a una misión muy cerca de nosotros. Another thing that we're doing as a church is uh, we are supporting a mission work that is very close to our church. Hay un hermano llamado Esven Porras. Uh, there's a brother uh, uh, with the name Esven Porras and he works there. Uh, la manera en que estamos apoyando esa misión es que hemos hecho, uh, al menos hay tres equipos eh, para apoyar ese lugar. The way that we are working as a church to help this brother is that we created like three different groups uh, of people. Eh, cada domingo en la mañana un grupo o una familia asiste con él. So every Sunday in the morning we are rotating and at least one or two families uh, go there with him. Y así Amen. sucesivamente se rotan. And, and that's what we do, uh, you know, rotation in those families to support and help him. Eh, los días jueves, eh, on Thursday, Vamos y evangelizamos el área donde está predicando. We join him in that community and we go out door to door evangelism. Hemos estado viendo que Dios está atrayendo a algunas personas a escuchar la palabra en ese lugar. And we have seen that the Lord is opening doors and is working in the hearts of people and some visitors are coming. Así que oren también por este hermano que está muy cerquita de, de nuestra área y que el Señor le siga dando gracias para continuar adelante. So also keep the, that mission work in your prayers Amen. Uh, so that this brother can be encouraged and continue doing the work today. La obra misionera es algo, es, es difícil hacerla. Missionary work is very hard. Amen. Es mucho más fácil estar en una iglesia ya 
de tiempo a, que se congrega y con instalaciones cómodas. It's very easy when uh, you get to a place that there is already a church and uh, with all you know the construction and everything comfortable. Esa misión ni siquiera tiene un techo. But in that mission where Brother uh, Esben is right now, uh, he started even without any roof. Amen. Así que eh, viene el invierno y quizás ahora que regrese yo voy a estar ayudando en algunas cosas que van a estar trabajando. Uh, winter is coming, so we are thinking on uh, having a you know, small build there, uh, small building. So he's going to be, Mark is going to be helping when he goes there. To build something there. Uh, así que oren por uh, el evangelismo en ese lugar, oren por el progreso de esa obra y por este hermano y su familia. So also please uh, remember uh, this mission work in your prayers. Pray for uh, uh, the gospel there to be preached. Pray for uh, this brother and his family and pray for us that we can support. Amen. Amen. Vamos a ir a Marcos capítulo número 5. Let's go to the Word of God, to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Y vamos a estar leyendo unos versículos de este capítulo. And we're going to be reading a few verses in that chapter, Mark, uh, chapter 5. Y vamos, uh, quiero pensar que conocemos esta, este pequeño fragmento de la historia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. We're going to start there in verse 17, and I know this is a well-known uh, passage of the scripture. Así que vamos a ir directamente a algunos versículos uh, que nos van a llevar a nuestro tema en esta mañana. So we're starting in verse 17. This is the verse Vamos a estar del 14 um, al, creo que, el 20. Sí, sí. Uh, we're going to start in verse 14 through 20. 14 al 20. Mm -hmm. Uh, let, let us read this. Uh, it says in verse 14, <coughs> And they that fed the uh, swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Mm -hmm. and, and they that saw, saw it, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray him to depart out of the post right and when he was coming to the sheep he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him how did jesus suffer him not but said unto him go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the lord had done for thee and had had compassion on thee. Amen. And he departed and began to publish in the Catholics how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Amen. Amen. Vamos a Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, opportunity, this privilege that we have to open your word. And uh, Lord, thank you for your goodness, for your love, for your son Christ to die in Calvary, in Calvary for our sins. Father, we do pray and ask you to please forgive our shortcomings, our uh, sins, our mistakes. And Father, we ask you to please give us uh, the words that we need to speak. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher at this mm -hmm. time. And please bless this church. Please, please uh, bless uh, uh, Pastor uh, Brother Larry, uh, his wife, his family. and. Father, just impress upon our heart uh, the need to serve Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. En el versículo número 18, nuestro Señor Jesucristo está saliendo de esta región. In verse number 18, the Lord Jesus Christ is getting out of that location. Él va a proseguir con su ministerio en otro lugar. Now he is getting ready to continue with his ministry in a different place. Y antes de que sea demasiado tarde, este hombre que se benefició de lo que Cristo hizo. But before he left, this man that was greatly benefited 
uh, by the uh, miracle that the Lord Jesus performed <coughs> in him. Él le hace una petición a nuestro Señor. He is now uh, coming to the Lord Jesus Christ with mm -hmm. that petition, asking something. Y la es, es simple. Estar and what he's asking for is very simple. He was asking him that he wanted to be with him. Ahora, si nosotros vemos el texto, nosotros vemos que esta petición no es una locura más. Now, we look at the context and what happened here, we, we see that uh, uh, what he was asking for was not something out of his mind. Sino que vemos que Dios le había dado una mente ordenada a este hombre y él estaba pensando lo que estaba diciendo. But now God and the Lord uh, uh, gave him a different life with what he did and so he was asking now to be with the Lord. Ahora también este hombre hace esta petición no solamente con una mente ordenada sino que también iluminada por nuestro Señor Jesús. Now he's 100% in his mind, you know, in, in behaving in the right way and uh, now the Lord has also healed his heart. Él Amen. sabe quién es él. Now he knows who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Amen. No sé que el Mesías ha venido y le ha beneficiado, le ha ayudado grandemente. Now he knows that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah and has healed him and has saved him. Amen. Él sabe, él sabe que Cristo Jesús es el Hijo de Dios y quiere servirle. Now he knows that the, 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 uh, the Lord Christ, uh, Jesus, is precisely the Lord and now he wants to serve him. Él se siente guiado para hacer esto y él lo desea genuinamente. Mm -hmm. He is led of the Lord to do that. Amen. Genuinely wants to do that in his heart. Él quiere continuar con nuestro Señor Jesucristo y con las cosas que él pueda hacer. Él quiere estar allí. He wants to walk along with the Lord Jesus Christ and help in any way that he could. Amen. Así que entonces esta petición es una petición sincera o genuina. Now what he's asking for, therefore we can conclude, it, it was a, the right thing to do. Esta petición es motivada por la verdad en su corazón hacia nuestro Señor Jesús. The motivation behind this uh, uh, request or petition, if you will, was because of his new condition in his mm -hmm. heart. Amen. Entonces él le dice, Señor, déjame estar contigo. And so he is... Uh, asking the Lord uh, to, to allow him to be with him. Right. Y la respuesta es no. But the answer was sort of a no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pero Señor, yo quiero, yo quiero estar donde tú estés. And, you know, maybe he thought, well, Lord, I'm going to be where, whatever you, you are. No. Mm -hmm. But the answer was no. Right. Todos los creyentes son llamados al campo misionero. All the believers somehow are called to the mission field. Todos, Amen. ¿todos son pastores. Esa es, es una pregunta. Now the question is, are all of them pastors? Nosotros decimos no. We know that the answer is no. Todos los creyentes deben de dejar su casa y vivir en una tierra extraña. Now, is it a request for all the believers to leave their home and go to a strange uh, place, a foreign country? Si no quieres, right. si no te sientes movido. If you're not led of the Lord, if you're not moving your heart to do so. Si el Señor no te ha llamado a esto. If the Lord hasn't called you to do that. Right. No tienes que hacerlo. You don't have to do it. No tienes que dejar tu casa esta mañana. You don't have to leave, you know, your home behind and tu, go somewhere else. Tu comodidad y tu trabajo. You don't have to leave uh, probably your comfort and your work. Si el Señor te ha, no te ha puesto esto en el corazón, no estás obligado a hacerlo. If the Lord has not laid down your heart and uh, burdened your heart to do so, you just don't do it. Right. Si Dios no te llama a trabajar, a la obra donde él afirma if, if the Lord uh, doesn't call you uh, to the the to the place where uh, you think you you will go el Señor dice 
Afirmativamente, alzad vuestros ojos y mirad las regiones, porque ya están blancas para la siega. But still there is something to do. The Lord said, Behold, I said unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Amen. They are white already. Si hay, si hay alguien que diga, no, yo no, yo no me siento capaz, yo no creo que sea mi lugar allí. If uh, someone is thinking, well, you know, the Lord uh, hasn't put a burden on me to, on, on my heart to go out and, and probably I, I'm not even the right one or I cannot do it. Entonces, no hay problema alguno con ello. Está bien, no tienes que ir allá. Well, that's okay. You, you're not a missionary to go to a, you know, to an, a foreign country. ¿Han escuchado las historias de los misioneros que alguien ha narrado por allí? Have you ever heard the uh, story of a missionary? Seguramente que sí, y eso quizás no suene tan atractivo para muchos, eh, para muchos cristianos. Maybe you have heard these troubles and things like that. It doesn't sound even attractive. <laughs> Entonces, therefore, podemos ver que este hombre no fue enviado a vivir lejos de casa. We can see in this passage that this man was not called to go outside to a foreign country. Él no fue enviado a buscar para nuestro Señor Jesús a gente extraña. He was not called to go outside and, you know, uh, reach out to people who was strange to him. Mm -hmm. Pero el Señor le dice, vete a tu casa. But the Lord, look what he uh, told him. He's saying, he's, he's telling him, go home to thy friends. Amen. Vete a los tuyos, le dijo el Señor Jesús. Go to yours. Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee. Amen. Así que déjenme decir la primera cosa en esta mañana. So let me tell you the first thing in this morning. Todos tenemos un pequeño rebaño en casa. We all have people that we need to reach. That's Amen. our family. Todos tenemos nuestra familia y que algunos de ellos no conocen a Cristo Jesús. We all have people in our family who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Algunos que han estado tan lejos de la verdad y están sumidos en muchos uh, mundos de perdición. There may be some of them that they are far away from God, from His Word, and they are probably... Uh, deep into some other things that are not good at all for them. El Señor no nos llama fuera, el Señor nos llama vete a tu casa. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is not telling him this man to a foreign land, but he's telling him go to thy home. Amen. Si tú eres un hombre, un varón convertido, eh? si tú eres la cabeza de un hogar, if you are a man a believer this morning, you are the head of a family. Tú no solamente, no, no solamente tienes el deber de proveer y dar seguridad. You're not only uh, uh, commanded to provide for yours materially speaking and safety, you will. Sino que también tenemos el deber de ir a, a los nuestros y enseñarles la verdad de Dios. But you know, we also have the command to <coughs> take care of your family and teach them the truth and the word of God. Por supuesto que nuestro deber material, la escritura lo dice y nos lo impone a nosotros los varones. It is true that as a head of a family, we have, uh, we have to provide, uh, you know, for living for our family. Y como cristianos no podemos renunciar a este deber. And as Christians, we cannot just forget about that. La Biblia lo enseña en 1 Timoteo 5, 8. The uh, Bible teach, teaches that to us in 1 uh, Timoteo 5, 8. 1 Timothy 5, 8. Mm -hmm. Y dice que si alguno no provee. It says, but if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and his words than an infidel. Nuestro right. deber con nuestra familia, por supuesto, está en esta vida, en las cosas materiales. 
yes, we have the responsibility to provide to our family in this life in you know all the material things. Pero no solamente en lo material. Sino but it's not only the material aspect. Sino también hay un deber en el área espiritual. We also have the responsibility in the spiritual area. Nosotros Amen. somos llamados por Dios a este deber. We are called by the Lord also to this, to provide spiritually to our family. El Señor nos enseña que somos la luz en Mateo 5. The Lord uh, taught in Matthew chapter 5 that if we are believers, we are the light of todo, this world. Todo hijo de Dios ha venido a ser la luz de un hogar. Every children of uh, God has become the uh, light uh, in his home or her home. Amen. Y ojalá quisiéramos decir algo distinto, pero no todos en nuestra familia son creyentes. And, you know, we wish we can say something different, but we know that not everyone in our family is saved. Right. El Señor también nos ha dado el deber de ir hacia ellos y anunciarles la verdad. The Lord has given us that responsibility also that we need to teach them the truth to preach the word. Amen. Ahora. Déjame decirte que como padre de familia o como hombre de Dios. Now let me uh, tell you this that as a father and a preacher, tenemos ese derecho de compartir la verdad de Dios con otros. I believe that we have that uh, responsibility to uh, share the gospel and the truth with mm -hmm. others. Amen. En Génesis 18, 19, ese es un texto algo fuerte para algunos. In the uh, in, in Genesis, ¿qué capítulo? En el capítulo número 18. In Genesis chapter 18, versículo 19. Uh -huh. In verse 19, el Señor habla de un hombre que iba a cumplir su responsabilidad. We see here how the, uh, how God is talking about a man that he knew he was going to uh, do this. He says in uh, Genesis 18, chapter 19, uh, uh, talking about Abraham, uh, he says, For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to Amen. do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Amen. Escuchen esa palabra, es, es, puede sonar algo fuerte para muchos, pero dice la escritura, dice, yo sé que él mandará a la familia. And listen, this may, may sound a uh, uh, little bit uh, different, even not politically correct probably, but it says, for I know him that he will command his children and his house Amen. after him. Dios right. nos ha dado el derecho, cristianos. God has given us uh, the uh, right, the responsibility to write and, and the authority de mandar a nuestra familia to command our family de guiarnos por el buen camino to guide them in the ways of the Lord. Nosotros, como hijos de Dios, mm -hmm. Dios ha conferido ese derecho a nosotros. We, as the children of God, God has given us that uh, um, responsibility and Amen. authority to do so. Nadie puede quitarnos ese derecho dado por Dios a nosotros. Nobody can actually take away that right and that uh, um, that authority given to us uh, by God. Amen. Y a la vez es un deber y un derecho que Dios nos ha dado directamente a nosotros. He has given us that directly to us. No podemos pasar de largo. De nuestra familia. We cannot forget about our family. Mm -hmm. No podemos omitir y decir que no tenemos un deber allí. We cannot uh, deny the responsibility Amen. that we have. El Señor nos ha declarado nuestro deber en las Escrituras. The Lord has actually commanded us and has told us that we need to do that. Amen. We need to teach the word to them. Cuando era niño, este, y vivía con mis padres. When I was a child and I used to live with my parents, eh, la, la puerta de nuestro cuarto no tenía una chapa. The, um, the door of our bedroom didn't have a, how you call that, brother? The doorknob? 
like uh, <laughs> what you insert the key to a lock. Lock. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> eh, el, 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 la forma en que se atoraba esa puerta era con un clavo. So the way that we secured that door it was with a little nail. <laughs> Bend it. Así que si nosotros no estábamos listos el domingo en la mañana a la iglesia. So if we were not ready for church Sunday morning, early in the morning, ese clavo que estaba ahí iba a salir volando. <laughs> that nail was going to fly away. <laughs> Porque no tenemos, no teníamos ese privilegio de quedarnos en casa. Staying at home was not an option for us. No, right? Way. Amen. Eh, no teníamos esa oportunidad de decir, bueno, hoy yo estoy cansado, tengo tarea y me voy a quedar en casa. That was not an option. That was, we didn't have the opportunity to say, uh, you know what, I'm very tired. I want to stay at home. <laughs> Mi papá usaba ese derecho. My father actually exercised uh, his uh, responsibility and the right and authority that God gave him. Amen. Tengo un hermano que tiene como... 20 años, algo así. I had a brother who is about uh, like 20 years old. Todavía vive con mis papás. And he still lives with my parents. Él no es cristiano. He, he, he's not a believer. He's not a Christian. Yo no creo que conozca al Señor. I don't think he knows the Lord. Mm. Y todavía ese hombre sigue usando ese derecho que Dios le ha dado con ese hijo. But still my Era. father continues exercising that right and responsibility and authority that the Lord has given him. Y yeah, es opción quedarse el domingo en casa. For my brother is not an option to stay at home on mm -hmm. Sunday. Yo no lo veo participando ese joven en un ministerio o en piano o en dirección de himnos. I don't see my brother, you know, like uh, serving the Lord, uh, singing or playing an instrument or something. Pero no es un oportunidad de quedarse en casa. Mm. But that's not his option or his opportunity to yeah, stay at home. ¿Por qué pasa esto? ¿Y de dónde saca este hombre tales ideas? So maybe the question is, okay, why that happens and where those ideas are coming from? El Señor a cada uno de nosotros como hijos de Dios y como responsables nos ha dado este derecho. Because the Lord has given us that uh, command and that authority for each of us that mm -hmm. we, who are the head of a family. Y él nos dice, ves a tu casa. He told that man, go to your home. Cada uno de nosotros tiene el derecho de ir a su familia y predicarles del Señor a ellos. Each of us then uh, have that uh, responsibility to go and preach to Amen. our family. Amen. La Escritura deja bien en claro que nosotros tenemos este deber. The Scripture tells us that we have that responsibility. En Proverbios 4, 3 y 4. En Proverbs chapter 3, 4. El capítulo 3. Proverbios 4. Proverbs actually chapter 4. 3 y 4. En verse 3 y 4. Proverbs chapter 4, mm. verse 3 y 4. Un hombre ya ha hecho grande, decía esto. So look at what a grown man, an adult, said. Verse 3, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3. For I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and leave. Amen. And look at verse 10. Hear, O oh my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Amen. Si pudiéramos nosotros seguir con este eh, capítulo, nosotros vamos a ver el testimonio de este hombre. We're not going to continue with this uh, chapter, but we can see the testimony of this man. En el 20, versículo 20. Like in verse 20, una vez más. Uh, one more time, it says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my say. Amen. No vamos a ir allá, pero un hombre de 600 años, llamado Noé. We're not going to go there, but a man who was 600 years old, with the name Noah. Animó e instruyó a su familia. He was trying to encourage and instruct his family. Man. Una cosa jamás antes vista, lo que era un arca. He actually led them to build something that 
was never built before and has never been built. And yes, we can say, well, it was the grace of God bestowed in their hearts and that's the reason they did that. Pero también tenemos que entender que hubo una responsabilidad de parte de ese hombre. But we also have to understand that there was a responsibility and a command Amen. that Noah exercised. Amen. Queridos hermanos, nosotros tenemos ese deber de ir y de regresar a nuestra familia. Beloved brethren, this morning we have that responsibility to reach out to our family. Cuando nosotros vemos a un aspirante al pastorado y que quiere entrar en esta bella labor. When we see someone that believes that is called to be a preacher or a pastor. Primera Timoteo 3, 1 al 5. In 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1, 3, 5. 1, 3, 5. Beginning in verse 1 through 5. Uh, the qualifications of the pastor says in 1 Timothy 3.1, this is a true saying, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. Amen. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, up to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of uh, filthy look, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruled well his own house, Amen. having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Mm -hmm. Antes de que este hombre vaya ahí por el, uh, por, uh, por el mundo en predicar el Evangelio, before a man is willing to preach the gospel and go to any part of the world to preach the gospel, antes de que vaya a esos extraños y que intente volverlos hacia el Señor Jesucristo, before he, go, uh, he goes out to the strangers and try to convert them to the Lord Jesus Christ, antes que quiere enseñarnos a nosotros, before he wants to teach to anyone else, él tuvo que haber ido primero ya con su familia. He has to teach and reach his own family. Amen. Y tiene mucho sentido por todo lo que estamos viendo en estos uh, uh, requisitos. And it makes a lot of sense for what we are seeing here, what we're reading here. Él es su rebaño inmediato. That's the immediate flock that he has. His Amen. Family. Su familia, su pequeña iglesia en ese lugar y tiene que hacer esa labor primero ahí. That's his small church, if you will, and he has Amen. to work there. Así que ven que este deber es para todos los cristianos. So we can see here that this is for every believer. Mm -hmm. Si hay alguien en esta mañana que no quiere ir por el mundo y predicar el evangelio y que lo haga otro, if uh, there is anyone this morning that uh, say, well, I'm not called to go to a stranger, you know, foreign <laughs> land and do this. Nosotros decimos, está bien, no vayas por allí. We say, okay, don't go there. Pero el Señor te dice, tú tienes que ir a los tuyos. But the Lord is telling you, you have to go to your home, to your, your family. Has predicado el Evangelio a tu familia. Have you preached the gospel? To your family, right? Los pecados familiares. Have you ever uh, confronted, if you will, uh, uh, scenes in, in your own family? Mm. El Señor nos manda esta labor. The Lord is teaching us that we need to do that. Amen. Ahora, nuestro deber, como ya lo hemos dicho, es predicarles el Evangelio. Now again, our responsibility is to preach the gospel. A ver, este deber no termina trayéndolos a la iglesia. Now, if we do that, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna, you know, come to church, be safe. Claro, es parte de este deber traer a los hijos o a nuestras familias a la iglesia que escuchen la palabra. Yes, when our children, when they are at home with us, uh, you know, they, they should come with us to, to, to church. Pero lo que respecta a nosotros, a nuestra persona, Es predicarles el Evangelio de Cristo. But our responsibility, our main responsibility is to preach and teach them the gospel. Amen. 
¿Tienes hijos en esta mañana? Do you have children at home? ¿Tienes still? hermanos? Do you have brothers and sisters? ¿O padres? What about your parents? Mm -hmm. ¿Les amas en verdad? Do you really love them? ¿Quieres lo mejor para ellos? Do you really want the best for them? ¿Te has puesto a pensar que si ellos no creen en Cristo Jesús, qué va a pasar con sus vidas? Have you ever considered or thought what is going to happen to them if they don't believe the gospel, if they don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ? In the Lord Jesus Christ. ¿Puedes recordar los buenos momentos que Dios te ha permitido tener con ellos? Have, have you considered, do you remember all the good times that you have had with, with them, with your family? Yo tengo en mi mente eh, muchas uh, imágenes de mis hijos. I have in my mind uh, many, uh, uh, many things in my mind about my children. Puedo recordar muchos momentos como tocar sus manos. I can remember a lot of things, you know, even touching their hands. Puedes tú recordar la, la sonrisa de cada uno de ellos en tus mentes. Can you remember the picture of their smiles in your mm -hmm. mind? Puedes recordarlos quizás de una cierta edad a, a, a ciertos familiares tuyos. Maybe uh, some of your relatives, extended family, your family, your children, when they were younger. Pero si ellos no creen en Cristo, ¿tú sabes qué va a pasar con ellos? But uh, do you remember, do you know what's going to happen to them if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ? Ellos, the ellos irán al lugar de tormento para siempre. They will go to that place right. of eternal torment. Ellos, ellos estarán Amen. eternamente en el infierno eh, teniendo una situación nada agradable. They will be in that place called hell. La palabra del Señor nos dice que se necesita predicar el evangelio. Amen. The word of God is telling us that we need to preach the gospel to them. Romanos 10, 13 y 14. Do you remember in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, 13 y 14? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 and 14. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And look at verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Amen. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. Sabes que en el lugar del tormento, en el en el mismísimo infierno. Do you know that in the place of torment and death in hell, como lo narra Lucas 16, as it is uh, taught in Luke chapter 16, hay hombres que practican ciertos pecados en ese lugar. There are men there that they are there because of their sins. Mm -hmm. Uno de ellos es la ira y el enojo. And one of them could be as simple as angerness. Tú sabes que hay hombres que están enfadados y amargados en ese lugar. They continue in there uh, being, you know, uh, with bitterness and angry. Right. ¿Cuántos hombres no, son, no fueron hijos de padres piadosos? How many of them belong or were uh, the children of uh, Christian parents probably? Hmm. Ellos tienen una memoria. Ellos recuerdan. They have a memory, they remember. Right. ¿Cuántos padres no están cumpliendo esa responsabilidad con su familia? How many of us, how many parents uh, are in reality taking that responsibility to preach to their family, their children? Un hombre molesto le echa la culpa a quien sea, menos a él. When someone is upset, blames everybody but doesn't take responsibility. No, ¿Tú crees que habrá alguien que inculpe a algún cristiano en ese lugar? I wonder if there will be someone in hell at this moment that is blaming a Christian for mm -hmm. not preaching the gospel. Cuando aquel hombre estaba en el infierno, él decía, tengo cinco hermanos. 
with that man, the rich man wasn't killed. He yeah. said, "Oh, I have five brothers." Tengo que ir a predicarles a esos cinco hermanos y anunciarles que aquí está el lugar. I want someone to go there and preach them the gospel. And what is going to happen to them? El tiempo del evangelismo es el día de hoy. The time to preach the gospel is today. Dios God has commanded us to, to do that. Cuántas veces sea posible. Uh, any, any time and, uh, you know, as many times as, as we can. Ahora, ¿cuál es el conflicto en este deber? ¿Dónde está ese conflicto? Uh, what was the issue, what's the struggle and the conflict that we have? Bueno, nosotros somos un gran conflicto a nosotros mismos. Nuestra carne es el problema. What that begins with us is, is, is difficult for us, our flesh. Nosotros right. no, so, no somos del todo fiel a, a, a Mateo 28 de ir y predicar. First, we're not faithful even to that passage in Matthew chapter uh, 28, the Great Commission. Cuando right. queremos hacer una tarea y cuando esta es espiritual, más difícil se nos when hace. We want, we, when we want to do something, when we want to work, and especially that's a spiritual work, it's very difficult. Entre más espiritual, más complicada. Uh, and that requires more spiritual dedication is more difficult. Amen. A ti no se te hace difícil salir a las seis de la mañana y llegar a las seis de la tarde. For you, maybe you work. I mean, it is not that difficult for you to get up really early in the morning, 6 a.m. and come back home 6 p.m. Y lo hace cinco o seis veces a la semana. And you do it five, six times during the week. Mm -hmm. Y eso hasta lo disfrutamos, salir, trabajar y hacer esto, ¿no? And maybe it comes to the point where we even sort of enjoy that. Right. Pero cuando se nos pide que vayamos a los nuestros. But when we are commanded, when we are asked to go to our home. Todo. Todo es algo contrario. Todo es, se vuelve complicado. To preach the gospel seems like everything is very complicated. Right. Recordamos que nuestro que mm -hmm. que, que, hay, que todas las necesidades de nuestra casa están presentes en ese mismo instante que tenemos que ir a predicar. It seems like when we want to talk about that, you know, every other thing is uh, more important. Right. Lavar el vehículo se vuelve más importante, ¿no? Maybe even washing my car is more important. <laughs> right? Cualquier otra cosa que quieras mm -hmm. poner ahí como ejemplo. <laughs> you name it, any other activity is, seems like it's more important. Así yeah. que el conflicto a este deber somos nosotros mismos. So we are the first problem, our flesh, to do that. Amen. Es difícil para nosotros hacer esta labor. It's very difficult for us to do that. Si bien la podemos eh, señalar muy fácilmente en las escrituras, en la práctica es complicada. We can point that to the scripture very easily, and we find it there. But in the practice, it's difficult for us. <laughs> right. Aparte de que nuestra carne se, se niega a compartir la bendita verdad de Cristo con nuestra familia. Now, in addition to that, the, the struggle that we have in the flesh to share the gospel. Marcos 6, 4. In the um, gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 6, Marcos 6, 4. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, the gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Mm -hmm. Su propia casa, su propia tierra, lo desprecia. His own country, his own house. Mm -hmm. En ocasiones, a nuestra propia familia le es muy fácil. Mm arrojar palabras de desprecio. Most of the times, uh, it is more difficult to talk to our family and they are ready to point out to, you know, our uh, mistakes or defects or, or some other things. Poner un rostro áspero y de desprecio. Maybe they even put like a hard face to us when we're trying to talk to them about it. Simplemente decir frases como, ya vas a empezar otra vez. Or simply say phrases like, oh, don't start again. <laughs> right? Con los extraños no es así. It seems like with the strange people, uh, you know, we have more opportunities, not like that. 
Unos extraños, yo soy el hermano Marco. <laughs> With these strange people, uh, I may have even a title, I'm brother or pastor Marco. <laughs> Con la familia no les voy a decir cómo me dicen. I'm not going to tell you how my family tells me, how they call me. Entonces, cuando hablamos del deber de predicar el evangelio en nuestra familia. So when we talk about the responsibility of preaching the gospel to our family. No solamente es difícil por nosotros mismos. It's not only difficult because of our own flesh. Todavía se vuelve más complicado porque it's estamos hablando de nuestra casa. It is more complicated because that's you know, our own house. Y allí en nuestra casa nos van a golpear fuerte. And then in our own house, uh, you know, they, they're going to be very straightforward with us. Ellos no van a tener compasión en decir cualquier cosa hacia, hacia tu persona. Maybe they will not even have, uh, you know, compassion and tell you something really hard. Recuerdan el testimonio de Cristo Jesús. But do you remember what happened with the Lord Jesus Christ? Fueron los judíos. It was his own country, the Jews. A él. The Jews. Lo golpearon. That uh, punished him and crucified him. Amen. Y él dijo, hey, si al árbol verde le hicieron esto, ¿qué será de ti, el seco? And he even said, if they did this to the uh, green tree, what would happen with that one that has no life? Mm -hmm. Se llora por ti y por tus hijos. Va a ser difícil la situación que tengas que pasar con ellos. And all the women cry for your children. Así que, it's going to be very hard in the future. Tenemos que ver cuál es la ganancia de cumplir nuestro deber. We have to see the other side of the things. What, what are we going to gain with, uh, uh, you know, doing what we're supposed to do, our responsibility? En primer lugar, first of all, una conciencia tranquila. We uh, will have a good conscience that we reach out to others. Mm -hmm. Hace unos días escuché, um, cuando andamos evangelizando ya en, en, pesque, en, en nuestra localidad. A few days uh, ago I heard something when we are reaching out to our community. Eh, estaba a punto de llegar una cuadra donde vivía una persona que eh, los hijos tuvieron un conflicto con mis hijos. I was very close, like one block away, to uh, get to a house of a family that their children had sort of a sort of a conflict with my own children. Problemas de niños. It was just like children issues. Mm. Um, y <sighs> me apena decir esto, pero and I'm a little embarrassed to say this. Um, eh, tuve cierta resistencia de llegar a ese lugar. I had certain resistance in my heart to go there and talk to them. Una mezcla de pena y de cualquier otro tipo de cosa. I was a little embarrassed and some other things. En fin, la cuadra que tomé, yo no la terminé de evangelizar. Faltaba todavía esa. I was in that street, in that block, trying to reach out to people. Así terminamos esa tarde, yo no pude terminar esa cuadra donde andaba evangelizando y ni siquiera pasé a la siguiente. And I couldn't finish even the whole block there because, because of time constraint. Mm -hmm. Hace dos semanas eh, me llegó la noticia que la persona que vivía en esa casa falleció en el shock. Two weeks ago I received the news that that person who lives in that house uh, died because of a a car accident. Mm. Y delante del Señor yo me sentí muy mal. And before the Lord, I didn't feel good about that. I, I feel really bad. Porque si bien yo no tuve la oportunidad porque estaba en otro lugar. It is true that I didn't have the opportunity to reach out because I was preaching to other people there. El Señor conoció mis pensamientos. But the Lord knows my, my thoughts, what, what I thought at that time. Cierta right. cosa de resistencia en predicar a ese lugar. I sort of was uh, having a second mind in like covering resistance to go to that house and, and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Esa mujer ya no está. That, that person, that lady is, is not alive anymore. Y nunca más la voy a volver mm. a ver. And I will never see her again. Y quizás yo tuve la oportunidad de que se fuera a predicar el evangelio. And I had the opportunity to reach out and preach. Mm -hmm. Soy sincero, me pena esto. Being honest with you, I, I feel embarrassed about that. Mm. Pero tu familia no es para siempre tampoco. But let us remember that our family, your family, 
is not going to always be here neither. Pero si tú les predicas el evangelio de Cristo a ellos, tu conciencia estará en paz. If you reaching out and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to them, uh, to begin with, you're meeting, fulfilling your responsibility, your conscience should be good. Has hecho lo que te correspondía y has predicado el verdadero mensaje a aquellos que debiste haber predicado. You have done what you're supposed to do, fulfilling the commandment of the Lord. Amen. Pero si tú no les predicas, si esta noche parten de tu lado. But if you don't preach to them the gospel, what about if they are gone tonight? Vas a llorar. You're going to cry. Mm -hmm. Vas a llorar por tu culpabilidad y por tu conciencia en esta noche. You're not going to have a good conscience. Amen. And you're, you're going to remember this. Así que cuando nosotros cumplimos con nuestro deber. So when we uh, fulfill our uh, responsibility, when we do what we're supposed to do. Nuestra conciencia está bien con nosotros mismos. Yes, we're going to have a good conscience that we did what we're supposed to do. El apóstol Pablo, no vamos a la cita, pero el apóstol Pablo le decía, estoy libre de la sangre de todos ustedes. The apostle Paul told those uh, brethren that uh, he had good conscience and he was uh, free of the uh, blood of uh, them. Amen. Porque había predicado la palabra y no, no hay culpabilidad en el hombre que se ha esforzado. Because he preached the gospel, he preached the word, everything that he could. Amen. Aparte de ganar una conciencia tranquila en nosotros mismos al cumplir este deber. But it's not only about having a good conscience. <coughs> En el mejor de los casos es que quizás el Señor traiga a nuestra familia a Cristo. One of the Lord uh, uses us to use us to, to, to save some members of our family. Estoy seguro que hay muchos de los tuyos que todavía no han, han sido alcanzados por el Señor. I'm very sure that you have uh, many in your family, your extended family that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Hablando de los hijos en la familia, Proverbios 22, 6. If we talk about the uh, children in the family, in Proverbs 22, 22, 6. 6. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, he says, Train up a child in Amen. the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Proverbs 22, 6. Cuando uno comparte el evangelio con su familia tiene esperanza. When you share the gospel with others, and especially with your family, there is hope. Tiene esperanza de que quizás un día el Señor los atraiga. There is hope that probably the Lord is going to save them someday. Tengo esperanza de tener hijos cristianos. I have hope that I will have uh, Christian children. Así que cumplir este deber. So if we fulfill this responsibility, this commandment, tiene la ganancia de tener una esperanza de ver a, a nuestra familia caminando con el Señor. We have the hope that the Lord may save and that our family may be es, walking with the Lord. Ese fue el caso Amen. con Timoteo, y de hecho Pablo lo, 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 lo da testimonio de él en sus cartas. That's what also the Apostle Paul told uh, Timothy in one of his letters. Ahora, Si el Señor no trae a nuestra familia al, a los pies de Cristo. Now, if the Lord um, do, does not save our family. Si no hay ningún converso durante toda nuestra vida y cada uno de ellos en vez de ir por el buen camino se va por el peor camino. So, if the Lord doesn't save and, um, you know, and they are going in the wrong direction in a different way. El Señor nos da un día en la eternidad nuestra recompensa. The Lord will give us a reward anyway in uh, eternity. Amen. En el versículo de 2 Timoteo 4 y en el versículo número 7. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, in uh, verse uh, 7. 7 8. Verse 7 and 8, the words of the Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight, I have finished a curse, I have kept the uh, faith. Henceforth there is uh, laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Amen. which the Lord, the righteous judge, 
shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. El Señor no olvidará nuestros esfuerzos hacia él. The Lord is not going to forget el Señor our va, good works. El Señor va a recompensar Amen. un our, día en aquel día. Our obedience to him, and he's going to reward us one day in eternity. Amen. Nuestra responsabilidad debe de llevarse a cabo y que Dios so, nos dé la gracia. Our responsibility must be fulfilled. We need to be obedient to the Lord and may he give us the grace to be here. Que nuestro hogar sea una pequeña congregación donde se alaba al Señor. May the, Lord, may the Lord help us to understand and work towards uh, our house to become a small congregation where the Lord is uh, uh, worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your attention. Gracias.